So I can't get enough of the Galapagos. This is just an amazing place. I did the Northern Islands in the first eight days, and then I decided to do the second trip to the Southern Islands, and this is a good representation. So Santa Cruz being the main island right there, that's where you fly into. There's a little peninsula there, another little island called Baltra. There's an airport there, that's the major airport. And then over in San Cristobal, there's another airport, and that's only 8,000 people where Santa Cruz is. About 20,000, that's where most of the people live up here on that island. And Boltra is that little peninsula that sticks out and you just take a ferry across to Santa Cruz after you land there. So this gives you a good idea. These are the Northern Islands up there, the craters, and that's just absolutely beautiful. That's what I did on my first trip. And then over to Marinchetti Island and then over to the big islands over here and Elizabeth Bay and just a beautiful area, very remote. You definitely feel that when you're on these islands that you're out in the middle of nowhere. And every island is just a little bit different with a little different flora and fauna and animal life as well. And that's Elizabeth Bay right in there. And some of these islands that look like the moon, just craters everywhere for the volcanic activity. But the southern part is very, very cool. Floriana is where we went. And that's where the famous Ritters and Whitmires and the whole saga happened down in that area. And then we went over to Espanola Island and then back over to uh, San Cristobal. So that just kind of gives you a little overview of what these islands look like. And they're quite far apart, you know, sometimes about four hours to eight hour journey in a boat at about, you know, 10, 12 knots or whatever you're going. And then before I left though, on the second trip, I went out to uh, Tortuga Bay, which was absolutely one of the most beautiful beaches I've ever seen in my life. Beautiful, those creamiest white sand ever. And of course, there's iguanas, and this guy's running out to the sea to eat his algae, but just beautiful. And so on the first morning, we went to Feriana, and we did a walk on the beach and just saw all kinds of cool things. We saw the green glass that's from the volcanic activity, and this beach was just absolutely stunning. And of course, Morris is just the most awesome naturalist and he shows us so many cool things, how the storks eat their food. When they get a fish, they have to drain the water out of their beak and then lift their beak up and then swallow the fish. Very interesting stuff. So, and then the seals, you know, when they're mating, they stay with their females for about two weeks, they get exhausted and then they have to go to the bachelor pad. And then, this is really, really interesting. All the little fish, the sardines, and the grasshoppers, and all the different uh, plant life and animal life everywhere. We saw a big flamingo lagoon, which was absolutely beautiful. And the, the flamingos here are a beautiful pink color. They eat the shrimp, the shrimp eat the algae, and that's what gives the flamingos their color. And then the plants will actually stick to the feathers of a bird, and that's how a lot of the plant life got here from South America, the plants would actually stick to the bird's feathers. Birds would come here and then propagate all the different plants. And then this was another beautiful bay where the turtles were nesting. And we saw that, we saw the turtles going up to the beach to bury their eggs. Now it's every two to eight years they do this. So there's a big spread between the times where they actually nest. And you know, they lay like a hundred eggs and they're lucky if one or two of them live. And they gotta swim like crazy to get out to the deep sea. And then they don't see them for 25 years before they actually come back to nest and they just basically disappear. But we did a dinghy ride around the islands and we saw all kinds of cool things. And in the Galapagos, I mean, you're gonna see seals everywhere. And they're always very, very playful, whether you're in the water or out of the water. Now, on all these videos, I spent a lot of time in the water because we snorkeled at least twice a day and we were either swimming with hammerheads and eels and, and manta rays and um, Galapagos sharks and lots of seals, seals swimming all around us. But you're not going to see much of that because they didn't bring a GoPro. But So there's a land portion and there's an uh, uh, ocean portion. And the ocean portion is just a huge part of seeing the Galapagos. And you're always in there. And these seals are absolutely the cutest things in the world. They always want to come up and play. But what I learned is they will bite you if you're up on land because they're not as agile on land and they have to protect themselves. But in the water, they'll play with you forever. And the cactus is just absolutely stunning. They're like trees and they're beautiful and they're everywhere. And this is a very unusual set of birds right here. 
they look like they have makeup on. I don't know all the names, but this crab actually had a bloom from a cactus and he was taking it somewhere. I don't know where he was taking it. And uh, another beautiful island. And then look at this huge manta ray. It's about 12 foot across and we got to see that. Uh, we saw so many cool things and the dolphins jumping, hundreds of dolphins, if not thousands. Beautiful sunset. And then in the evening of the first day, we had a little briefing and then we had the crew come up and Morris introduced the captain and everyone. We had a little toast. We had a great time to start off the second trip to the Southern Islands. The next morning we woke up and we went on another beach walk and the mockingbirds are really one of the most interesting birds. They're very curious. They come right up to you. I had one drink out of my hand and the hermit crabs are absolutely awesome as well. And the lizards, look at the detail in these lizards, Galapagos lizards. And these are Christmas tree iguanas. So the algae that they eat makes them turn green and red. Very, very interesting. This little action they're making with their head is basically a warning to other males stay out of my territory or to us <laughs> that we're getting a little too close. But of course, you can get really close to all the animals. That's probably the most incredible thing. The animals are not afraid of you. I mean, you can get within a foot of these birds and they'll just sit there. They don't do anything. A beautiful coastline shot and more of the iguanas, just absolutely stunning. And the seals being playful as they always are. And this is amazing. This is a baby stork feeding from the mother with his head fully inside the mother's uh, beak and throat. And then comes out and gets the fish and eats it. Isn't that crazy? You see the wildest things in the Galapagos. And again, more beautiful beaches. We did a lot of beautiful beach walks. This one, we actually went snorkeling here. No, not snorkeling. We actually just went swimming along this beach. Lots of seals. You have to stay away from the big bull seals because they can be a little aggressive. But Morris doing a great job explaining to the kids all the beautiful wonders of this island. And look at this little baby seal sitting up there on the ledge. And he's just completely on his own waiting for his mother. And then he realizes we're there and he says, oh, you know what, uh, I think I'm gonna get out of here. When he finds out that it, mama's not close, he says, let me get out to the water and let me get out to the water in a hurry. He takes off down the rock and away he goes. And they are just absolutely adorable. You wanna pick them up and hug them, but you can't touch them, but they'll come right up to you, no problem at all. And you gotta get out of their way sometimes. They have a, a great time and they're, they're very curious. For the most part, they wanna play with you. They'll even come up to you and touch you, but you're not supposed to touch them. We don't touch them. We just let them come up and do their thing. But this guy definitely wanted to get to the water and get away from all of us. And more explaining more of the interesting things about the island and what we'll see. And these are some of the frigate birds. Now, this was a great walk. This is on the island of San Cristobal. And it's just beautiful rock formations and this this lichen, they, they can put it in ammonia and it turns a bright magenta and color and they use it for dyes. But look at this landscape, look at this beautiful morning. We had these mountains, just gorgeous. And then blue-footed boobies and they're nesting all over the place and our boat sitting there all by itself. Remember, I never saw anyone on this trip. We are always the lone boat. Now normally you'd see two or three, maybe a hundred people on this beach. And there was no one, just our small group of like nine people. Absolutely an awesome experience. And we had just so much fun uh, seeing all this stuff, completely exploring without anybody around us. That's probably the most incredible thing about this trip is nobody's anywhere. We had the Galapagos to ourselves. And this is uh, sky watching and the blue-footed boobies doing their walk, which is absolutely hysterical. This is how they mate. I fast forward it just to kind of give you a little bit of an idea of what it looks like. But again, beautiful landscape, beautiful, beautiful weather, be beautiful everything. And this bird was very interesting. It's an American uh, something, an uh, oyster bird. I can't remember the exact name, but beautiful, beautiful bird. And this is a great island to go scuba diving and snorkeling on and then back to San Cristobal to pick up a few more guests and drop off a few and most of these boats are just sitting uh, nobody's using them because it's just very very quiet in the Galapagos and the seals sitting in the street and it's just very very cool 
everywhere you go, look at the seals. Just, they're, they're literally almost sinking this dock right here. And this is one of the boats, $4 million boat, just sitting there with nothing to do. So we went on to another island and we saw all the great frigate birds and they're mating and they blow up their, their chest with this big red balloon to attract, attract the females and more blue-footed boobies doing their booby dance and their booby walk and they're just, they're absolutely hysterical the way they do. This is a really cool island too. We went snorkeling around this island. There's a sky watch. And then we also walked around. Look at this guy. He comes right up to us, touches us. No problem. Just sit there. And they're just so curious. And it's so much fun to be around these animals in this proximity. And we just walked through this whole island. Never saw another group of people. Just us and the animals. Just only, you know, I think there's 13 of us in this group. And we had a family from Mexico, which was just wonderful. And it was wonderful seeing all this through the eyes of children. Can you imagine being a kid and going to the Galapagos and experiencing all this? It was just an epic experience. I can't imagine. I waited until I was 60 years old to go to the Galapagos. And here we have kids that were, you know, four or five and six that were at the Galapagos seeing this wonder. And of all the places I've been, the, the places that are really the most mysterious, if you will, from animal to plant life, would have been uh, Antarctica, Galapagos, and Africa. Just really wild, wild uh, experience. So that's our Southern Island trip, and it was so over the top. So we continue to walk around the small island, see all kinds of different things, lots of birds, lots of seals, lots of iguanas. Everything was different though. This little guy wanted to find his mom, so he took off in between our pack. And this guy was just doing his typical pose and just so much fun. And this mama and this baby, this baby wanted to nurse so bad, it was chasing the mama into the water. And the mama said, I don't have anything to do with you. We got back into the boat and we saw some more of the, the frigate birds uh, mating. And a beautiful sunset as we started up the boat we had our dinner and we begin to navigate to our next destination so on the fifth day in the evening we navigated to the small little island of santa fe off of santa cruz we woke up in the morning we got the kayaks out because we had a beautiful sunrise to be able to navigate around the bay and look at all the wildlife and fauna particularly the cactus on this island was just spectacular and the sunrise lit the beach up and the sea lions came out to greet us and they're always so playful they come right up to the edge of the kayak and they're always playing around and they're always very very friendly we navigated along the coastline and we saw beautiful rock formations and large high cliffs everywhere we went it was really a, quite a morning and then we tied all the kayaks together and we towed them back to the boat and then we went out in the afternoon for a walk and Morris explained how three currents came together from the south from Antarctica from the north from up in Alaska and also from over in the east and they all merged together perfectly at the Galapagos Islands to create the perfect environment for all these species to come together. Now, if the islands were a little bit to the south or to the north, it would not have worked. So they were perfectly aligned in exactly the right position. I would say this might be a good example of intelligent design and not the chance that Darwin suggested, but that's just my opinion. Morris did a great job on giving us a talk about how all this happened. And then we continued around the island and we saw the most beautiful things. Number one was the incredible iguanas and the large cactus that were so huge. It was like a forest, absolutely incredible. Now these cactus are really only found in the Galapagos and the iguanas also are only found in the Galapagos and this particular island as well. So these are a different kind of iguana than we've seen anywhere else. And the, the flower on the cactus is what the iguana loves to eat. So they wait underneath the cactus and when they drop off, they eat them up. And this guy's doing his little barking, if you will, to make sure everybody stays away from the other female that was nearby. But these flowers were just stunning. And I picked off a petal 
and ate it and it was actually very delicious so i know why the iguanas love it but look at the size of those cactus and then we went down to the beach and saw all the sea lions and the male lions protecting all the females so we moved the boat and we went to a new island and this island was called plaza island pretty close to santa cruz and santa fe and this island was named after a former president of ecuador very very small island we saw lots of really really cool stuff uh, the iguanas here were just crazy and they were all sitting underneath this tree and underneath this tree were all these blooms so they were waiting for the blooms to drop off so they could eat them all and they were all just looking at us going what are you looking at and we were going we're looking at you because you're looking at all these blooms waiting for them to drop off and they all just sat underneath the tree it's pretty funny and then lots of blue-footed boobies as well and when we got up to the edge, it was just gorgeous, this beautiful cliff, you know, maybe a hundred foot high and looking out over the water. And there were lots of fish in the water too, feeding right on the surface that we could see as well. But a beautiful landscape. It had this ice plant that was a bright red. So that in contrast to the tall cactus trees, it was just spectacular. And then the beautiful breeze and sunshine, everything was perfect. Lots of blue-footed boobies down there doing their thing on the water, and that's where the fish were as well. We would look down over the cliff, and you could see all these fish in the water. It was just great. But then I got this one section where the seals were way high up on the top, and it was pretty crazy. Here's a iguana. Look at the different color, kind of a rust or yellow color. We've never seen one quite like that. And these are all the fish. Look at all the fish in the water here. Just thousands of fish. And then on this cliff the seals would climb all the way up the cliff and they would sleep at the very top. It was crazy, it was like a bachelor pad for the uh, male seals. But we couldn't figure out how they climbed all the way up here, but they did. They're very resourceful and they come up here and they sit for a day. But look at this beautiful ice plant with the red colors. And again, Morris has given us great uh, information. Now, this is really probably the most interesting. Look at all these stones. All the rocks are polished and shiny, why? because the seals poop and pee on them and then rub and polish them so it's like a countertop it's just absolutely stunning all these rocks are polished from the seals so this is a seagull that hunts only at night during the day it's always on land and this is her baby and we've never seen one before in the entire uh, 16 days this is the first time i've ever seen one and here's one with an egg underneath it and i'm right next to him literally like a foot and a half away it doesn't even bother him we get to the dock there's a baby seal there that's looking for his mama and crying out just very tiny i think just born maybe a couple weeks ago at best we get back in the boat and our next destination is an island called China Hat and it looks just like a China hat. We get there in the morning, we take off at four, we get there at six. So the captain's so cool, he swings by this other crater that's just the top of a volcano and inside is water and inside there are flamingos. So we get up on the top deck and if you go right at the right spot, you can just see in there and there's the flamingos, just absolutely incredible. And Ruben and Claudia and the family all got out there. We got a great picture of them and it was just so beautiful. And then we went to China Hat Island and this is where we did our walk. And of course, all the wildlife was incredible. The crabs and the baby seals came up to us. And I think I got my best video of all with the baby seal because he came right up and touched my camera and gave me a nice whisker shot. It was pretty cool and the kids loved it. And if you just sit there, they'll come to you, but you don't want to touch them. They'll touch you, but you don't touch them. And when they touch you, it's just a lot of fun. It's just so cool. And Samuel, and Reuben there and then we got these waves crashing up on the shore and more iguanas and just absolutely a beautiful place and then we got in the kayaks and we went kayaking all over the island and that was just like super super cool and we collected some trash actually and I saw this rope lava which I thought was really really beautiful so that was fun and then again we went snorkeling along this whole island here and we saw uh, some penguins which are very unusual there's only about 30 of them here's 20 percent of them or there's two of them i think there's 10 actually on this island and then this herring i think this is a heron big huge bird really really tall and we got pretty close to him as well and that was really fun and interesting to see that as well and he ruffles his feathers and gives us a little bit of a show and then flies off i didn't get him flying off but a huge wingspan and then we got in the kayaks and that was a great time and little reuben wanted to try the stand-up paddle so we got him on there i figured he would fall off but he did super well he took off right away and right did, did an excellent job so not bad 
and then we traveled on to our next destination i think el toro which is one of the most famous rocks in all of As the Galapagos. We were sailing to our next destination i went out and there's frigate birds following the ship but then this one had landed right on the mooring system and it was pretty cool i got up right close to him again about a foot and a half away he didn't carry he's a huge bird he could poke my eyeballs out if i got too close but he just finally decided to fly off and i got him as we approached our next amazing hike, we're gonna hike up this mountain, the bird flew off. So our next destination was Pinnacle Rock. And this is one of the most famous places in all the Galapagos. You see a lot of the pictures here that are taken because the landscape is absolutely stunning. They have a wooden walkway all the way up to the top of the mountain, about 360 steps. We look out over the top and the view is just spectacular over this bay and all the volcanic activity. And these are called parasitic cones. These are all the small little uh, volcanic action that happens off the side of the main volcano and they're really really beautiful they create a gorgeous landscape some sailors who saw some of the eruptions in the galapagos described it as hell on earth the fish were dying everything was dying as this mountain smoked so morris you said we visited more places than darwin mr darwin when he came to galapagos in the 1835 he visited four islands in five weeks and mr andre in two weeks visited 18 islands <laughs> okay, and what, were, what were, <laughs> where, where were the islands? So, we started visiting um, Paltra, then Santa Cruz, uh, Genovesa, Mosquera, Marchena, Isabela, Fernandina, Floriana, um, Española, San Cristóbal, Santa Fe, Plazas, uh, Chinese Hut, Cambridge Rocks, Bartolomé, James Island, Ravida, Seymour. Wow. <laughs> so we hiked back down this beautiful mountain to Pinnacle Rock. We got on the ship and our next stop was Santiago Island. Now this was absolutely fascinating. In the morning we woke up to a beautiful sunrise. And during this time, Morris gives us a ton of great lessons about all the things that happened on this island. Number one, somebody was left here on this island and Robinson Crusoe, the famous book, was written about this story. During the pirates' times, they used to assault the coast of Peru and steal Pisco from the Peruvians. And this jar where they used to store the Pisco. And then after that, they used to come to Galapagos and hide from the Spanish and at the same time have big parties with Pisco. And this is the Pirates biggest piece times. you've ever found? This is the biggest piece I ever found in 20 years. Wow. It's been buried in the sand and it's in good condition. This piece is probably around 250 years old. Okay, so this is what you normally find? Yeah, these are the, the pieces that you normally find in this island. And where did you find them? Just sitting right there? Yeah, here. Maybe someone found it on the beach, yeah. picked it up and left it here. So we continued along the tide pools and found lots of cool things like this little baby seal, tiny, tiny guy in his own little cave and he was yeah, absolutely yeah, benign to us. It's made of ash, you can see. It erodes very easily. That's why this type of cone have beautiful shapes and it happened when the eruption was in the water or near the water forming a or making a huge pyroclastic eruption and then the ash sedimented and the water before pressed the ash down to compact and form these cones then little crabs crawling around Morris is so good at finding things that we don't even see. And look at this beautiful butterfly. I'd never seen one before in the Galapagos until today. And this forest was crazy. It was like a miniature forest. These looked like full grown trees, but they were tiny. It had no leaves in San Mateo Island. Now because it rains, it has leaves and fruits. It's called Crota. It looks like a miniature forest. It looks like full-size trees, but only mini ones. Then Morris flips over a rock and there's a scorpion and very, very poisonous. And then Morris gives us a great lesson on how the islands were formed. It is so fascinating. Isabella has this shape, like this. So what we're looking at this moment is Wolf. That volcano is Wolf. Darwin and Alcera volcano. Right here, the equator line across. So we are very close to the equator line. So this is the only island in Galapagos 
formed by more than one volcano because every island like this is a volcano it's the tip of a giant submarine volcano so these volcanoes at the beginning they were independent and there was water in between them but as the volcanoes were emerging from the ocean they joined together to form one big island Isabella so this, and all these volcanoes are active the last eruption was in this one Sierra Negra this volcano will be the next one because the last eruption here was about 8 years ago and this volcano the last eruption was 100,000 years ago and it's still active but this is half of the volcano is underwater and it's connected to another volcano it's on a little rock that you see here it's called Roca Redonda but underwater below sea level is about 4,000 meters deep so it's a giant submarine volcano if this volcano makes eruption it's connected to this one and the walls will collapse causing a tsunami with waves reaching Guayaquil and Guayaquil will be covered if this volcano make eruption and these iguanas were fascinating as well. Now we've never seen one like this before with a totally white face because this is the salt that builds up on their head as they go for their salt bath. So this guy was unusually beautiful and he held still just perfectly for me to get the perfect video as well. And we continued and we walked along all the tide pools and then the lessons really became incredible because I couldn't see anything in these tide pools, but Morris pointed out so many amazing things that were happening right in front of us. Like all these tiny fish and tiny crabs. Oh, this is a big one. We ended up just sitting there and staring at these pools for like 15 minutes and watching what was going on. It was like a miniature Disneyland in here. When we first walked up, I didn't see anything. And then everything came alive. And the Gobi is this tiny one right here in front of my fingers. And the Gobi, the smallest vertebrate fish now look at all the movement in here everything is moving around all these little crabs different size shells it was so interesting and these pools when they drained there was a big bridge that became exposed so stunningly beautiful literally some of the most beautiful pools I've ever seen and the sea lions this is where they hung out and this is a fur seal and you can tell by the size of his head look how much bigger he is and into the water this is one of the four islands that Darwin visited so Santiago was Santiago Island he was a tall guy and this is Darwin's toilet it flashes so can we assume that Darwin was probably right here? Darwin walked on this area where we're up here walking now. Wow. And right after he left the island, he had this concept that the fish are not static, but dynamic and changing through time and adapting to their natural habitat, or the habitat where they, they are found. And he was only 26 years old when he was here. When he started the journey, he was 22. 22? Four years later, he visited the Galapagos Island, he was 26 and the captain was 25 when he started the journey 29 when they when and they was here. darwin educated where did he go to school he went to first to edinburgh to study medicine but then he changed her, his mind yes. then he went to cambridge he went to cambridge he went to cambridge and what was his degree in there he studied uh he, he was studying to be a clergyman a clergyman a clergyman, a clergyman. Uh, yeah. yes uh but he liked a lot uh, oh look at we have a fur seal going in Darwin's toilet. Uh -oh. It's going to be. The fur seal is going to use the toilet. Oh he's just getting a shade spot. So our next stop was the little island of Rapido, which is right up of Santiago. Now this is a red island and 
beautiful red sandy beaches and lava everywhere. We went on a nature hike up into the mountains to see all the beautiful wildlife and looking out over the bay and the lagoon where normally the flamingos would hang out, but they had migrated so we didn't get to see those. We went over to the backside and this is where we had snorkeled in the afternoon and it was absolutely beautiful. We saw sharks back here, we saw rays, huge schools of fishes. And as we walked along the beach, the dinghy saw just the kids and me and they passed us by to pick up everybody else. The kids were yelling, help, 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 help. But they went by the dinghy kind of making fun of us saying, we're gonna leave you here to be stranded. And the kids had a great time with it. We got back on board and we had a great toast to the entire crew that led us on this amazing eight day voyage to the Southern Islands of the Galapagos. And of course, Morris was our leader and he did a great job and the captain, Jose, and Winnie, and Eddie, and Freddie, and Roberto, our butler, and everybody was just so awesome. We had a great time. We celebrated and toasted to the entire team for making the whole thing possible. This is a very small, intimate boat. I think we only had about 10 people on board this time. Normally holds about 14, and we just had a great time. And in the morning, we woke up and we had one more island to go to, Sombrero, and it was a small island. When we woke up in the morning, though, we looked over at the Galapagos sharks actually in the water circling our boat. We didn't jump in and snorkel with them, but normally we would have, but we just didn't have the time. But we went on to the island, and this was a fascinating island because the frigate birds and the blue-footed boobies were in full form, but the frigate birds were the best we had seen on the entire trip. Their pouch was completely blown up. This is the male, and this is what they do to attract the female and they even fly with this thing fully inflated and then this one was mating this is very unusual to get that on film they were mating and look at how big these sacks have been blown up man who says size doesn't matter obviously it does and the bigger the sack the better it attracts the female and they sit on their nests and they hold their wings out and they make a lot of noise sometimes and then we found a dead iguana and I touched its teeth. It was very, very interesting. These little fine teeth are what they eat all the algae underneath the water because these are marine iguanas. And look at, look at the pouches blown up and look at all the action and the females coming by to check it out, see whether or not the nest is good, see how good the pouch is. And the males are just going crazy. So there's lots of these males with the blown up pouch all over the island. And it's very interesting. I got a lot of great footage from behind, from the front with the sun on them. Look how bright they are. And then of course, Samba, 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 our last trip back to the boat as we would end this amazing journey to the Galapagos Islands. Thank you to the crew and team and Morris.